Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpabana chapam Animadi biravritam mayukhai Raham mityeva vibhavaye bhavani Kulam Ritaika Rasika Kula Sanketa Palini Namaste. So this now begins the section of Lalita Sahasranam on the Kundalini. Kundalini is the most subtle form of Lalitambika. Previously we discussed the gross form, the physical form, as a human female. And then the more subtle forms, huh? the mantra form, which is the Panchadashi and Shodashi mantras. Then the subtler form, which is Kamakala, or the Bija mantra, Ing. And we discussed that in the previous series on mysteries of the matrika. Well, that's very esoteric. But now we get to the most esoteric, the most subtle form of kundalini. And it begins with this nama, kulamritaika rasika. She likes the taste of kula. Kula has several meanings. It can mean the path from the root or base chakra all the way to the Sahasrara. It can also mean a family or tribe, or in this case, a disciplic lineage. And it can also mean the nectar. Kula is the nectar that is released when Shakti and Shiva unite in Sahasrara by practice of Kundalini Yoga. Now Kundalini Yoga is very, uh, how can I say, easily misunderstood because in most of the scriptures it is presented in a metaphorical way using uh, illustrations, poetic language rather than literal language. And most of the people who present on Kundalini have not experienced it. It's just they read a book or something on it. And because of that, they cannot give adequate guidance or they cannot translate or explain the figurative language of the scriptures in practical terms. So, in this series, we're going to try to remedy that. <laughs> so, this kula has three aspects. The ida, the pingala, and the sushrumna. And these are channels, subtle channels in the spine. Huh? You will not find them in any anatomy book. <laughs> They're not visible to the ordinary eyes, but you can feel them if you begin to practice yoga properly. Now, of course, in the West, or even in India now, most of what is called yoga is actually not yoga at all. It's just an exercise form. But real yoga means to unite the individual soul with the super soul, to unite the uh, person, the purusha, with God. Brahman. And this is done in a very tricky way, <laughs> has to be in a very tricky way, because the actual uh, trap or the illusion that we're in is very complex and subtle. So how is this done? Kula, one of the etymological derivations of Kula, 
means absorption of the earth element. So when Kundalini Shakti is coiled around the base of the spine, the Muladhara Chakra, three and a half times, uh, and then begins to rise, she has to penetrate each chakra in turn. And we have given many, many talks about the chakras, the four views, chaturdarshanam, and the different states of consciousness connected with them. So now we're going to bring all this together. And in this series of names, 22 names, starting with this 90 to 111, we're going to explain the whole process of Kundalini, how it rises, what the different aspects are, the symptoms, the experience, and actually how to do it in a practical way. Now, this is my experience. It may not be your experience because each and every individual mind may use different symbology, different terminology, different descriptions for the same phenomena. This is a problem of language. This is why we encourage everyone watching these videos to take our courses on our course site, here's the link, and learn the terminology that we are using. And in this way, there'll be less confusion and it will help you practice more. This Nama literally means that she likes the taste of Kula. Kula is the nectar that is born or churned when Shakti and Shiva unite in Sahasrara. And the whole practice of Kundalini Yoga is to get the Kundalini to rise and unite with Shiva. This is not something that can be forced. Huh? Shakti is all the energy in the universe. She is all the consciousness, all the intelligence in the universe. She's the designer of the universe and the power that manifests it. All the demigods derive their power from her. Adi Shakti, huh? the original power. All other powers are simply derivative. And she is present in each and every body as the Kundalini. So she does not need any help. <laughs> and to think that one is the doer and is making the Kundalini rise by some effort of will is just absurd. It's wrong. It won't work. It will get you in trouble. You will suffer. There was some nonsense guy, what's his name? Gopi Krishna wrote a very popular, unfortunately, series of books, supposedly about awakening Kundalini. And in the whole series of books, he portrays himself as the doer and that he is making Kundalini rise. He also reports that he went through so much suffering so many nasty symptoms, huh? I wonder if there's any correlation between trying to force Kundalini to rise and going through painful, uncomfortable symptoms. You think? So this is the thing. Kundalini is going to rise if and when she feels like it. <laughs> Whatever you do is really not of much consequence. So when does she feel like it? When all the chakras are cleansed, aligned, tuned, and brought to their highest energy level. So when the path is clear, when the kula, uh, the path, these three spinal channels, Ida, Pingala, and Sushumna, when they're all clear and clean and devoid of blockages, then Kundalini will rise all by herself. You don't have to do anything. She'll manage everything. She has the intelligence. She has the energy. 
We are just really bystanders. So there are three main blockages in the Kula path. And these are called the grantis or knots. The Brahma granti, the Vishnu granti, and the Rudra granti. And we're going to explain each one of these in its turn as they come up in the namas in the proper order and sequence. So these knots cannot be untied by force. They can only be untied by a proper consciousness. And as we've discussed so many times, the consciousness is on four levels based on the four views, the Chatra Darshana. And so we're going to be explaining all of these, how they all fit together and work together to encourage or allow Kundalini to rise and unite with Shiva in the Sahasrara. The next Nama is Kula Sanketa Palini. Kula in this Nama means a race or family and Sanketa means a secret. Palini means protector. So she is the protector of the secrets of the Kaulas, those who practice the Kula path of Kundalini Yoga. Kunda means a vessel, like a, a pot or a bowl. So she is the goddess, uh, Alini, of the Kunda, the bowl or the receptacle of the Shakti at the base of the spine. And then, as we already described, there are so many techniques and so many approaches to encouraging her to rise and meet with Shiva. She's eager to meet with Shiva, but we are attached to keeping these blockages, these grantis, these knots of attachment. And the major attachment, of course, is to the body. We think the body is our self. No, it's not. Or we think the body is ours. No, that's not right either. <laughs> Did you make the body? No, Shakti made the body. Shakti is the owner of the body. And she is the energy of the body. In fact, she is all the five koshas, sheaths. We talked about this yesterday, the Anamaya kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manamaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, and Anandamaya Kosha. She is all those sheaths. And what are we? Ah. <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? What are we? Who are we? Who am I? As Ramana Maharshi was fond of asking. This is the ultimate question. And the experience of Kundalini answers this question in a way that leaves absolutely no doubt that aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Brahman covered over with various upadis, such as the body, the mind, actually the five sheaths. All these sheaths are actually upadis, they cover Brahman. And when these sheaths are removed, or simply our attachment to them is removed, then the reality can shine forth. And this is the whole purpose of yoga. Yoga means joining, it comes from the word yukta. That means hitching like a horse and wagon. So even though these techniques and forms of Kundalini are actually secrets, they can be discussed in public to a certain degree. But really, you have to investigate on your own. You have to study these books. You have to do the practices in the proper order and not try to jump ahead huh, of where you're really at because that'll just lead to fall down and that's painful. To think that, oh, I'm advanced, oh yeah, I got this, huh? And then, crash. <laughs> it's very painful. It's very difficult and confusing. One may doubt 
that what one experienced is real. We advise everyone to follow the proper order and sequence of these practices. And this is one of the greatest secrets and requires the greatest surrender to the guru, who can be external or internal, depending on your level of realization. And ultimately, your love for Shiva and Shakti and your appreciation and eagerness to see them combine and unite in love. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.